highly anticipated Inspector General report. Inspectors General. The Inspector General. The Inspector General. Yeah, the Inspector General's report, David. It feels like Inspectors General are all over the news these days. And even in some of our favorite TV shows and movies. Inspector General found gaps in my schedule. They're questioning me in an hour. I need to leave town. Where did you get this from? Inspector General's report. But what exactly is an Inspector General anyway? Let's break it down. Inspectors General are one of the more obscure offices within the executive branch. It's not exactly something you would have learned about in government civics or even schoolhouse rock. Yet, Inspectors General play an essential role in the functioning of our government. And in many ways, there are eyes and ears into what's happening or shouldn't be happening within an agency. The office has a really long history. One of the first mentions of an Inspector General dates back to the Revolutionary War. The position was originally established to oversee the military, but it would take a major political moment nearly 200 years later for inspectors general to function more broadly across the government. That moment was in the 1970s, the aftermath of Watergate and the Senate Church Committee's investigations into intelligence agency activities had both revealed significant and troubling abuses of government power to the public. Now faced with clear evidence that fraud, abuse, and waste had reached epidemic proportions, Congress recognized the need to house an internal watchdog office within and yet independent from government agencies. The Inspector General Act of 1978 established the nation's watchdogs. And today, almost every major federal department or agency has one. Inspector General offices work with Congress and with the agency they oversee to investigate potential instances of waste, fraud, and abuse of power, and issue reports and recommendations based on their findings. So, you might be wondering, how does this affect me? Well... This is one of the most infuriating government reports I've ever read. Shortages of cleaning supplies and thermometers. Regarding the opioid epidemic, the DEA was, quote, slow to respond. Mismanagement, inappropriate hiring decisions, sexual harassment. It can take up to 10 months to get unsafe products off all store shelves after a recall. Inspectors General unearth all kinds of things that the public and Congress deserve to know need fixing, and sometimes well ahead of it reaching the evening news. The Inspector General of the Transportation Department, for example, repeatedly raised issues with a federal program that approves and certifies commercial aircraft safety and design. Specifically, the Inspector General warned in 2015 that the FAA was not prioritizing oversight of the highest risk areas in the program, such as new aircraft design. But the agency didn't listen. This exact same program would go on to approve Boeing 737 MAX aircraft. Only three years after the Inspector General report, Lion Air Flight 610, a 737 MAX aircraft, crashed in Indonesia, killing all 189 people on board. A few months later, another 737 MAX aircraft crashed in Ethiopia, killing 157. The 737 MAX accidents shined a light on the FAA's weak oversight of the program that allowed these tragedies to happen. And to date, the FAA has not implemented all of the Inspector General recommendations from 2015. This brings us to a key point in understanding how Inspectors General function. Their role is to identify and recommend how to fix a problem, but it's up to the agency to take action. Just take a look at the Department of Homeland Security. In May 2018, the DHS Inspector General conducted an unannounced inspection of an immigration detention center and identified a number of serious issues that required immediate attention. The Inspector General specifically noted nooses in detainee cells, overly restrictive solitary confinement, and untimely and inadequate detainee medical care. Immigration and Customs Enforcement would later self-report that it made substantial progress to address the findings and recommendations made by the Inspector General. But given the seriousness of the findings, Congress questioned whether the agency was doing enough. 
So a congressional committee brought ICE's staff and contractors to testify on the oversight of their detention facilities. Do you think that it is appropriate for your company to make that kind of statement that suggests ICE is doing everything properly, even though I know that you're particularly a beneficiary of their uh, resources? But unfortunately, not every inspector general recommendation rises to the level of Congress getting involved and placing pressure on the agency. In fact, this 2013 congressional report found that nearly 17,000 inspector general recommendations had not been fully implemented. And compounding the problem, agencies without permanent inspectors general have a disproportionately high number of open and unimplemented recommendations. Wait, 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 let's go back. Agencies without permanent inspectors general. Although their work is critical for overseeing federal agencies, many inspector general offices experience long gaps in their leadership. The CIA has been without a Senate-confirmed inspector general for five years. Meanwhile, it took over a decade for the Interior Department to have a permanent inspector general. Many of these positions are important enough that they require both nomination by the president and confirmation by the Senate. This vetting process helps instill confidence among Congress and the public that the office's investigations are accurate and credible. An issue occurs when the candidate hasn't been nominated or confirmed. In this case, the president puts forth an acting official. But acting inspectors general are not vetted by the Senate. And since they're meant to be temporary, they may see themselves as auditioning for the permanent role. This could lead to acting officials prioritizing not wanting to ruffle feathers over conducting rigorous oversight. This can have real consequences on the public. In 2019, an acting inspector general left office following allegations that he directed staff to write feel-good reports about the Federal Emergency Management Agency's disaster response instead of honestly assessing or revealing underlying issues. This practice continued over the course of five years, and FEMA ultimately retracted 13 reports from that time period including reports that assessed federal response to major disasters, such as Hurricane Sandy. As obscure as these offices may be, the work they do as watchdogs for Congress and the public is not. From healthcare to consumer safety, inspectors general are key to ensuring that agency mismanagement, waste, fraud, and abuse don't go unnoticed. They are uniquely positioned to help the government function the way it's supposed to for the people. So the next time an agency's mismanagement is splashed across the headlines, pay close attention. You may have an inspector general to thank for exposing it. Or maybe because no one was there to catch it in the first place.